What's going on, Badger fans? Let's take a trip down the pain lane and talk about some of our most painful Badger's losses. Why? Why not? Because we're Badger fans and we can commiserate together. All that, plus a lot of your comments and it's really interesting thoughts on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Really do appreciate every single person, every one of you tuning in to listen on the podcast, to watch on YouTube, however you are finding us. Uh, know that I am incredibly grateful for it, and thank you so much. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. All right, so I, I need to start here. I need. I haven't done this a lot on the show. I need to offer a very profound apology for everyone who may have potentially, possibly, maybe followed my advice and put a few dollars on the Phoenix Suns to win the NBA Finals. I am so sorry. I am. <sighs> wow. I am so sorry. If it makes y'all feel any better, know that I also lost a few dollars as well as um, a few years of my life with this this Phoenix Suns team. Super fun being a fan of of that. Anyway, uh, it, it brought up a question. This is not a Phoenix Suns podcast, obviously. It brought up a question, I think, from Evan Gabriel, who, Evan, thank you so much for the question and for listening. What are some of the most painful Badgers losses, right? And I did a show on this already, but it was a long time ago, and our, our this, this show has grown. The community has grown a lot, and I kind of want to talk about it again, and I want to get your takes. What are your most painful Badger losses? I have a couple that – still keep me up at night and low-key really quick we all respond to losses differently as fans but they impact all of us uniquely right nobody if you're not a fan you just don't understand it like i've had people like in the midst of me losing my mind when my teams lose games they shouldn't they'll be like oh it's gonna be okay and it's like you don't get it if you're not a fan you just don't get it yes it will be okay i get that you don't need to tell me that right now you if you're not a fan you just don't get it don't even try right last night I, in the midst of the Suns losing in an elimination game by a ridiculous amount of points for the second year in a row and looking like a non-competitive JV team, I just started anger steam mopping my floors. It was midnight on the East Coast, and I'm steam mopping my floors as the Denver Nuggets are destroying my team. I'm like, pick up the pace. Ugh, steam mop, steam mop, steam mop. Why would you shoot that? Steam mop, steam mop. Ugh. That's how I was last night. So. But again, it, it brings up the question, what are the most painful Badgers losses for y'all? The ones that still keep you up at night, that give you nightmares. I've got five listed right here. Um, these are the five that come to mind for me, but I would love to get your comments on this. Uh, I'm going to start here. I'm going to go in reverse order. I think for a lot of people, the number one is going to be obvious. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, for me, number five, 2017, the Badgers lose to Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. And with it dies a dream of, of going to the national title or going to the, the college football playoffs, right? They were ranked third or fourth. I'm trying to remember, but they were in the college football playoffs if they just beat Ohio State that year. And I say just beat Ohio State like that's a simple thing. That would be like me telling myself just stop eating Doritos. Like it just won't happen probably ever. But you just beat Ohio State and you're in the playoffs. Wisconsin was there undefeated going into that season. A great defense. Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, the, the reason that game probably isn't a little higher for me is I never really felt like we were going to beat Ohio State. So the letdown from it wasn't as big. I mean, listen, in the in the midst of that game, I'm obviously incredibly invested. The Badgers made a game of it. They came back. They had the ball with a chance to tie it at the end, right? The, the, they had time and the possession. But let's face it, Alex Hornibrook was horrific that game. He was 19 of 40. Jonathan Taylor couldn't get going. J.K. Dobbins absolutely gashed us. Ohio State was very clearly the better team that entire game. Um, Alex Van Ginkle had a, a pick six near the goal line. And, you know, J.T. Barrett was a little hobbled. But still, that is such a painful loss because of where you were as a program and what, what a playoff berth could have meant to the national pedigree of Wisconsin. You know, maybe it, it continues to elevate recruiting. Ah, we were right there. That's a painful one for me. Uh, number four, and again, we go back to the Ohio State well, 59 to nothing, Ohio State, uh, Big Ten title game. 
And, you know, like I've talked about this before. People have said that game in the in the the big picture doesn't need mean nearly as much as the 2017 game, which would have got you into the playoffs. That's correct. However, there's something about never being in a game that is uniquely painful, right? The the 2017 game, at least we were in it, and I I enjoyed that aspect of it more. Even if the stakes were higher, it I have, I have a better aftertaste of that game because the Badgers fought back. They got punched in the mouth and they fought back. They didn't give up. They didn't fold. This game, the 59 to nothing game against Ohio State's third string quarterback Cardale Jones, Wisconsin was favored in this game, y'all. I mean, I'm sure people remember that. They were, I think, three point favorites in this game, which is essentially a pick 'em, but. To lose 59 to nothing, uh, there were injuries on the offensive line. <clears throat> Melvin Gordon never got going. Cardell Jones, the third-string quarterback, was 12 of 17. Um, it was just embarrassing at every level. And when the embarrassment is on a national stage, right, when everybody's watching it, when it's prime time, when you've been looking forward to the game, because a lot of fans are like this. I'm like this. I'm sure a lot of y'all are like this. When there's a, a Big Ten title game or a big game, you spend the entire week looking forward to it, right? Game planning for it. Nachos, chips, where am I going to eat? Where's my food going to be? Where am I going to watch the game? Getting it all set up. You watch the hype videos, the introduction videos. And then to do that, it, it's just one of the ultimate letdowns of my Badger fandom, right? And again, yes, the stakes were higher the, in, in the game against Ohio State to go to the playoffs potentially, but you to lose 59 to nothing on a national stage like that, it, it just cements in the talking heads, the national talking heads and the fan bases that you're a phony program, right? You're a, you're a joke. You're an imposter. You don't, you're, you're, you're not in the big boy club and you can't argue it when you lose by almost 60 in a title game. So yeah, that, <clears throat> that game will always, always 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 stick with me it's just one of the most painful annoying frustrating badger losses of all time uh let me get to number three and then we'll take a quick break to get to the top two number three the 2014 wisconsin kentucky basketball game um chance obviously to go to the national title game you're playing this great loaded kentucky team you have the lead late up to you're up 73 to 71 Kentucky has the ball. They drive in. You almost force them out of bounds. They kick it around. They kick it to the corner, up to the wing. So it's kind of a broken possession. You're up to the clock's ticking down. Uh, Aaron Harrison's, you know, four feet behind the three-point line at the left wing. Josh Gosser's guarding him. And Harrison lets one fly and bangs it, right? Tough shot, absolutely. Gosser needs to get. So it's funny. I was watching this game at a good friend of mine's house, uh, Mike. And we were watching the game, and Mike instantly said, "You, that's on Gosser. you got to get a hand up. And I, my instant reaction, actually, I didn't agree with him. I said, that's a tough shot. But looking back in retrospect, yeah, you're up you're up two. You can't give up a, a clean look to a guy who had been clutch all playoffs. That was completely on Gosser. Um, and, you know, he gave him a lead. We came back. We couldn't convert. We had five seconds left after that shot went in. But force him to drive. Force him to at least take a two-pointer. Don't give up a clean-ish even if it's tough, when a cleanish look from three, Kentucky obviously hits it. We get our revenge a year later, but in the moment with a chance to go to the national title game with that core, you don't know what's going to happen the next year. It felt like an enormous opportunity missed. Um, sorry, I had to take a quick drink. Um, my throat's a little sketchy right now, but what an opportunity missed. Incredible game, by the way. Both of the Kentucky games were incredible games this year and the year one after. Um, but just unbelievable guts and shot making from Aaron Harrison, but just a gut punch, right? Because uh, we the defense possession was really good. We had forced them to drive and kick. We forced them to kick the ball around. And then we we made we got them to take a deep three, a low percentage deep three, and he just banged it. So that one hurt a lot. <laughs> Again, let me know in the comments where you're at. Most painful badger losses. I would totally love to do this with you. And I'm sorry for opening up old wounds, but you as fans, we can commiserate together. Again, nobody understands this pain better than us. And this is the support group here. It's good to, to kind of, you know, make sure we're all healed from these and we'll do it together. Uh, so coming up, the top two Badger losses for me in terms of painful memories, nightmarish experiences, and cold sweats at night. That's coming up next to Lost and Badger. The first today's show brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. Again, FanDuel is America's number one sports book, our great friends of the show. Uh, and it's a great time. You get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back. That's bonus bets back if you don't win. Uh, just head over. It's a great time with the NBA playoffs going on. Baseball's going on. You can get it on some futures. Over-unders we talked about on yesterday's show with Justin. Over-unders have been released. 
Wisconsin's at 8.5. I would take the over. <coughs> Excuse me. We went through the schedule. I would take the over. I would also take the under on probably Nebraska and Minnesota at 7.5 and 6.5, respectively. Um, very interesting. So that's going on at FanDuel. Go check out the under or over-unders for all the Big Ten teams. Um, right, right now, again, it's a great time to get your no sweat first bet back up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get a no sweat first bet. Uh, it's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Again, I want to say thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Everybody's making this one your first listen to the day. Thank you so much to the everydayers. If you were here yesterday, you heard Justin and I break down the schedule. Coming up tomorrow, a really special interview you're not going to want to miss. All that and more on Locked on Badgers. And let's get back into this. My, my top two painful losses. And I think if you've listened to this show, if you're an everydayer, you've heard me talk about number two a ton, the Michigan State Hail Mary. I'm going to call it the Fail Mary. Right? There was no video evidence to overturn that sucker. None. None. You can kind of piece together things, but there was no conclusive evidence. And that's what replay is supposed to be, conclusive evidence. Yes, I'm a fan. Yes, I'm biased. Yes, if I was a Michigan State fan, I would say, well, clearly his shoulder was over. That must mean the ball was over. But I'm not a Michigan State fan. I'm a Badger fan. Shouldn't have overturned it. But either way, you can't give up a Hail Mary. You can't You can't give that up in that moment. You can't rush three. You can't put Chris Borland in the middle of the field. I, I firmly believe that offense – could have powered the Badgers to a potential national title game. Um, I think they lost the next week to Iowa State because of a hangover to Michigan State. Obviously, they went on to lose to Oregon as well. But I think it all started with that game, that Michigan State game, that Hail Mary. <clears throat> One of the the most gut-wrenching losses. I remember I was in college at the time. <coughs> Excuse me. I was in college at the time. And I was walking around the next day in a fog. I was walking to a building and my buddy was texting me. He's like, that was a national title offense and we're never going to have this opportunity again. I don't know if that's true or not, but it definitely felt like a major opportunity lost. And it still bothers me to this day. Again, much like the Kentucky team, though, we would go on and get our revenge against that Michigan State team later in the year. And then the number one most painful loss, I think, for everybody. Our most, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but for most people, right, it's the national title game. Dropping the national title game to Duke um, just for all the reasons, right? For all the reasons of how difficult it is to get there, how much it would have meant for the Wisconsin program, how much it would have meant for those players, uh, how much it would have meant for the fans, for recruiting potentially, for everything that a national title game can do to a team that isn't a blue blood. It can elevate you, right? You can get one and it can build to the next, right? UConn did that. Uh Nova did that, right? You got to get that first one, though, and you got to cash in when you get that opportunity because you don't know when you'll ever get back there. And Wisconsin was there. Quite frankly, they blew it. I, listen, let me tell you one of the, the things that I don't ever really get down on too much is the referees. I don't think they were the reason we lost that game. I, I know a lot of Badger fans will point to the Justice Winslow late out of bounds thing where he touched the ball. Yes, he touched it. They'll point to the halftime, you know, uh, Coach K laying into the referees and yes tyce jones ended up going for seven percent from the free throw line um the foul discrepancy flipped a little bit at the end of the day sam decker was 0 for six from three in a game he lost by five right decker had a torrid tournament run and he was 0 for six in that game the biggest game the biggest moment of his life and listen that's not on him he didn't want to miss those shots it is what it is i would still roll the dice with him taking those shots all day because he was an elite wing for wisconsin that entire year but it just didn't go down, right? He makes two of those threes. You win the game probably. And that that's percentage wise what he should have done, right? Based on, I mean, he was, he was incredible. Most of that year, he was over six for three. Josh Gosser played 36 minutes and didn't score, right? Like he took one shot in 36 minutes. I mean, it's just, them's the breaks. You can't, you can't, I mean, that that's why we lost. It's not the refs. In my opinion, um, you can always point to certain calls, certain whistles, Certainly, Coach K had a way of manipulating working referees. I agree there, but <clears throat> you can't get 0 for 6 from one of your best weapons from three. No points from Josh Gosser, who was a really good spot up shooter. Just is what it is. I remember I watched that game with my parents, and after the loss, my mom, <clears throat> who was awesome, by the way, she was like, Ryan, it's okay. They finished second. Yep. I can't talk to you right now, Mom. We, we cannot have this conversation. It's not okay. This is not okay. Coach K just won his fifth national title. He doesn't need five rings. We need one. I went outside. I just walked around in the woods for like 30 minutes, I think, with a, a jar of ice cream. 
I think that literally that's, that, that, that is what I did. It was not, mom, it's not okay. <laughs> so anyway, those are my uh, top five most painful losses, Badger football, basketball. Let me know what your list is. Let me know where you are higher or lower. You know, definitely I'm not, as, uh, I haven't been a fan as, as long as some other people. So let me know if there's some old school losses that that still stick in your craw. Um, but with that, let's get into some comments. Cause we got a bunch of them here that I want to get into. I like doing, again, I haven't done one of these comment wrap up shows in a while. So I love getting everything that you guys are talking about. Uh, your comments are awesome on Twitter and the discord on the YouTube comment section. So I try to get as much of that into this as possible. Uh, let's keep going here. Let's get some of these comments in. Kevin Connett says, uh, not a basketball fan, but these shows are going to convert me. Speaking of the show I did with Dylan Graff, let's go, Kevin. Let's, great time to be a basketball fan. You got the Gus bus coming in, AJ Store. I think next year's team is going to be good. Um, let's go. Noda Whale says, Ryan, let's go, Suns. Oh, wait. <clears throat> Listen, I have not banned anybody, Noda Whale, from this show, but you are getting dangerously close, my friend. No, no, no. Um, Listen, I deserve that and more for all the, the Suns. Suns. Um, Juice I've been spreading around. So I deserve all that. John Berger said, I know John Garcia Jr. got a new job with Rivals, which is great. Does that mean he's no longer going to be a weekly guest? Yeah. So I had a couple of people reach out to me. <clears throat> uh, Tom Nieces did as well. Obviously, John Garcia has been an incredible guest on this show, talking all things recruiting, all things Badger recruiting. He did get an amazing opportunity at Rivals, which he took. He's going to absolutely kill it there. I love John. But that does mean our, our partnership, as it was, is unfortunately over for now. I hope to reach out. Maybe something could happen in the future. Maybe we could have him on to do like a signing day special. Absolutely no promises there, right? I don't know what <clears throat> he will be able to do. Um, he's incredible. He's awesome. He's always going to be welcome back if I can get him on. Brian Smith is the new recruiting analyst that we're going to be working with. Again, he's incredible. He was on a show this week. A lot of people really liked it. He's very insightful. He goes, literally his life is going to practice in uh, high school practices, uh, camps, so he's very, very plugged in. I think he's going to be a great addition to the content here. But John Garcia is unfortunately going to no longer be part of that rotation. Uh, Melvin Melvin asks, what does it mean? I, I did a show, this one with Dylan. Uh, we, we graded and we said, what if he only adds store, AJ store? Is that a successful offseason? Melvin says, what does it mean if he only added store? Is, isn't store the only player guard has landed? So true, but the window isn't technically closed. Gray guard could still go out and land somebody else. So the, the window's not closed. Um, I think it's probably a little unlikely at this point that anybody else gets brought in through the portal, but there's still a chance. Logan Couch says, uh, Mabry will lead us to glory. A lot of people high on that Mabry Met Tower hype train. I know Justin is, um, certainly Brian Smith, who came on the show, is NFL arm. Can he put it together? Can he connect all the dots that the great quarterbacks have? I think that's going to be the big question with him. I don't know, right? <clears throat> Sorry, I have to take a drink. My throat is like kind of itchy today. Um, I don't know if Mabry is going to put it all together, but if he does, he is the type of upside that's very unique for Wisconsin, for anybody, right? 6'5", NFL arm, physical, big kid. I'm very excited to see him. Uh, let's just say that. All right, let's keep going here. A bunch more comments. Um, blah, blah, blah. Texas Badger, we talked about a lot about uh, Tanner Mordecai, Nick Evers, Braden Locke. Texas Badger says, I agree, it's the mental game that separates the good from the great quarterbacks. And that's what I'm saying. Like, everybody's enamored with physical measurements, right? The Adonis quarterback, the fast guy with the rocket arm. That doesn't matter if this, this mental aspect of a game isn't there. And Braden Locke has already shown us that he's ahead of the curve there. Now, he hasn't proven it either, right? He's playing against the second string cornerbacks. He hasn't been in the fire, but he has proven at least that he can step in and grasp the offense and run the offense. He has risen up that depth chart for Phil Longo. So don't put everything into that, but don't ignore it, right? <clears throat> I think that's a, a really good comment from Texas Badger. Gus says, great show, Ryan. Dylan is a great addition to the Badger basketball talk. Gus, yeah, thank you, Gus, for that. Dylan's awesome. Dylan Graff, Badger Notes. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. They do incredible work, and he is really, really knowledgeable. Uh, we're going to be doing a live show with Dylan and me. Um, Dylan and I, I should say. We're going to take a bunch of comments, whatever you want to talk about, football, basketball. Look for that in the next week, maybe week and a half. I'm really excited for that one. Um, Lee Hershale says, great podcast. AJ Store is a huge get for Bucky. He will make everyone around him better and take pressure off of Chucky. Yes. that. See, that's the biggest thing. Actually, Lee, let, let's hold that. I want to take a very quick break for our friends at the show and get back and talk about this because I think, Lee, you are hitting on a very important topic here. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show and a quick break to say thank you to everybody who is tuning in. Y'all are amazing. 
Uh, let's keep it going. All right, let's get Lee's comment back up here. Great podcast. AJ Store is a huge gift for Bucky. He will make everybody around him better and take pressure off of Chucky. So this is something I've talked about a lot. Chucky Hepburn got pushed into a role as a lead guard and um, almost an elite score that I don't think he was ready for. And because of that, he got flack. It's almost because of the roster construction around him. He was pushed into this role. And then because he couldn't succeed in this role, he really isn't meant to fill. He was getting unwarranted criticism, in my opinion. He needs another score around him. He needs a guy in the wing that can help create. I think this creates spacing. AJ Store, I think it's going to help the pick and roll game, right? Again, more spacing. It's going to provide an outlet in transition for easier buckets. And eventually, AJ Store can develop into an alpha score for this team. I think it makes everybody better, but specifically that guy, Chucky Epper. And I think it creates spacing for him. I think it gives him another outlet. And I think it creates some easy buckets. By the way, it's also possible opposing defenses are going to have to adjust AJ store, i.e. putting a better defender on him and taking that better defender off of Chucky at times, which again is just going to make it easier on Hepburn. I think the store win, I think the store addition impacts the entire roster in a way that it, we're going to see next year quite a bit. All right, let's keep going here. Um, this is a good one from Ryan. This is a two-parter. I couldn't fit all of this into one comment because I have a character limit. But Ryan says the short answer is not a good offseason for Greg Gard. Next year's team will also miss the tournament. Seems that many believe Gus will somehow rise to, up to the top and be a star. AJ Store is good. But if Crowl, Hepper, and Wall in the season were good enough last year, this year will be no different. That is from Ryan 23791. Ryan 23791. So a couple of quick things. I disagree. First of all, Ryan, great name. Thank you for jumping on the show. I disagree with you on the idea that this team won't make the tournament next year. I think this team is almost a lock, quite frankly, to make the tournament next year. Um, AJ Store is good. Your point that a lot of people expect Gus to be a star. I don't think that's true. I don't think a lot of people are expecting Gus to be a star in year one. I think what they're expecting is improved post-depth, right? Somebody else who can come in where we don't need to put Carter Gilmore in as the back of five. If you get 10, 15 minutes from Gus Yaldin, as a bigger body, who's a little more skilled, who can give you a little more scoring, more rebounding, that already makes your your team better than using Carter Gilmore for those minutes. So I don't think the expectation is that Gus steps in and is immediately a star. I think eventually he will be, by the way. But I think he provides immediate solid depth, which I think helps his team tremendously. And then from, from a, a growth standpoint, Asijin is going to be better this year. So even if he wasn't enough last year, next year's version of Connor Asijin is going to be different than this year's version. And the addition of AJ Store gives you an athletic upgrade on the wing. I think next year's team is probably like a five or six seed, honestly. I think they're pretty solidly in the tournament. And maybe even a little more if AJ Store hits the ground running. So agree to disagree, which is is totally fine. I appreciate the comments. I just think you're you're underselling the talent on the team. And I think you're underselling AJ Store a little bit. Now let's keep going here. Gus says Kendrick Pryor was criminally underutilized. Yeah, I think. I think all the receivers were, though, right? Outside of maybe Quintus Sevis, Danny Davis was. I think A.J. Taylor even was. You know, there's been enough talent on the edges where this team could have been more dynamic. And it just, I mean, even look at guys like Aaron Crookshank. Yes, he fumbled sometimes. That dude is dynamic in the open field. You talk about underutilized, right? Like Isaac Arendo. Like, you can keep going down the list. The offense did a poor job outside of a couple workhorse running backs and some tight ends of really finding a way to maximize most of the talent, quite frankly, not just Kendrick Pryor. I thought they failed to maximize some of the running backs, several of the receivers. And that's that's why that's why we have a new offensive coordinator, right? That's why we have a new head coach, because the defense has been fine. It's been the offense that has been the problem, and that's why, you know, then – I guess what I'm saying is your point, Kendrick Pryor was criminally underutilized, Gus, 100% true, but the offense was criminally underutilized, right? The entire thing, essentially. So, and that's why we changed. All right, last comment here. This is from the Commandant. UW needs to hire Rajiv and put him in the recruiting department. After listening to him, if I was a recruit, I would say, where do I sign? This guy's a great ambassador for UW football and basketball. Uh, Commandant, thank you for the comment for sure. And yes, Rajiv is the best of us, honestly. Uh, great ambassador. Really optimistic, incredibly knowledgeable, articulate. Uh, he checks a lot of boxes. So uh, I agree. Great comment and a good one to end on. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. Really do appreciate all the continued support. And uh, join us tomorrow. Much more content coming out. Let's go. We're on Wisconsin.